Open your Bibles with me to 1 Thessalonians at chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians at chapter 5, verses 16, 17, and verse number 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Give thanks in every situation. Give thanks in every situation. I want to submit to us this morning, brothers and sisters, that You worship out of your experience. I was watching television this morning and I saw it, I'm sure, 10 or 15 times, but the commercial jumped out at me this morning. It's a commercial about a, a patch for cigarette smokers. It's a, it's a nicoderm patch to aid persons who are trying to quit smoking. And the commercial went on with all whatever they had to say about the Nicoderm CQ and, and whatever the, its qualities and properties and all of that. But the commercial ends by saying, for every great why, there's a great how. For every great why, there's a great how. Why do you come to church on Sunday morning? Why do you get up every week and come to the same place and sit in the same pew next to the same people, listen to the same preacher, go to the same Sunday school class every week without fail? You, you worship born of your experience. Um, tribulation, the Bible says, worketh patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And that hope does not make us ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. The, the, the only way to properly worship, the only way to truly worship is out of what you've been through. Uh, you, 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 you can tell somebody else's testimony, but it's not your testimony. You can preach somebody else's sermon, but it's not your sermon. Come on, help me if you can. You, you can pretend to carry on like you see somebody else carrying on on Sunday morning, but if it's not born out of your experience, it's false and fake, phony and untrue. But, but when God has been real good to you, when God has really brought you out, your worship takes a kind of different kind of flavor, a different kind of turn because it's no longer just repetition. It's no longer routine. It's no longer just showing up. Now that you know why, you get excited about how. I know why I worship. But Paul teaches us how to worship. Uh, he says rejoice evermore. 
always be rejoicing. Always be excited. Always be enthusiastic. Always rejoice. Always full of joy. Pray continuously without ceasing. In everything. Not for everything. But in everything. I'm, I'm not grateful for cancer. But I'm grateful in that situation. I wish I had somebody to help me. I'm not grateful for my heartache. But I'm thankful in the midst of my situation. I'm not grateful for the storm. But I praise God in the midst of my storm. In, in this... In this group of three exhortations, Paul leaves the habits that characterize the Christian's relationship to God. The first of those characteristics is praise. Verse number 16. Verse number 16 leads us into praise. Rejoice forevermore. The apostle never encourages believers to deny that adversity brings sadness and grief. Romans chapter 12 and verse 15 tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice, but to weep also with those who weep. But to recognize that in the midst of of the most agonizing situations, the presence of God through his spirit can infuse the soul with hope and the heart with joy. 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 Not happiness, but joy. Because happiness is contingent upon what's happening. But joy is in spite of what's happening. Brothers and sisters, you may, you may notice about some people uh, that they are not always smiling and always jumping up and down. And they're not always, they're not always ebullient and, and floating on air. Because everybody does not have that personality of just being effervescent and and just always springing up that's that's not everybody's personality and to look at that you would think that the people are coarse and cold but but life has a way of tempering you talk back to me if you can um uh, i don't i don't i don't bake uh, but i watch uh, the food channel and uh, I, I watch those people who bake and cook on the Food Channel. And uh, whenever there's a mixture that, that requires uh, eggs to be put in that mixture, a warm mixture, uh, the eggs have to be put in slowly to temper the mixture or you scramble the eggs. Uh, you, you, you mess up the end result if you put it in too quickly. Somebody sees where I'm trying to go here. So, so you have to temper the eggs. You have to pour a little bit of the warm mixture into the egg to get it acclimated to the temperature of what you're about to pour it into because you don't want to just put the cold eggs in there because you'll scramble the eggs in that hot mixture. That, that's the way God deals with us as it relates to our joy. God mixes enough trouble with enough happiness to fill us with contentment and joy. Because we are not always jumping up and down because we know that maybe around the corner is something we are not expecting. But if it comes, our faith has been tempered. Our joy has been made complete. Because we are not happy always, but we are always full of joy. And, and brothers and sisters, happiness comes and goes. But joy shows in your facial expression. Joy shows in your handshake. 
Joy shows up when everything around you is falling apart. You still come to church. You still hold your head up. You still give God your best hallelujah. It does not matter who's sitting next to you or what anybody thinks about. If God has been good to you, your joy springs up, the scripture says, in the life. The believers, the believers were not to display the dispassionate indifference of the Stoics. They were not to grasp the impersonal naturalism of the Neoplatonists. They were not to hold to the sterile academic approach to life of the skeptics. They could not fall prey to the rigorous idealism of the cynics, nor the eat, drink, and be merry philosophy of the Epicureans. The church was unique in its proclamation that joy was at the heart of its faith. And if you do not have real, lasting joy, I seriously question your commitment to the Lord Jesus because nobody can come to Jesus and be saved and leave the same way you came uh, that, that's something about that name that's something wonderful about that name that, that, that just Sunday morning gets me excited uh, I, I was raised with old folks uh, and uh, uh, my old people in my family, all of them are just about gone. But uh, being raised with old people, I had that kind of excitement about Sunday morning. Uh, they, they started getting ready on Friday. I wish I had somebody to help me here. Uh, my, my grandmother would put all her clothes out on Friday. And if something needed to be ironed, she'd iron it on Saturday. And most of her cooking was done on Saturday night because Sunday was the Lord's day. Uh, we were going to church at, at early morning service and then going to Sunday school and then going to 11 o'clock service and then going to BYPU at 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon and then staying for night service. That was church all day long. It wore you out. We, we just got through reading the responsive reading. My zeal wears me out. And when you really give God your best praise, it wears you out. I don't understand you Christians who leave here fresh and jumping up after service is over. I'm tired after I get through praising God. Because I've come to give God my best hallelujah. I want to leave it all on the field. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus singing and praying with my walking and talking with my mind stayed on Jesus I don't come to church to spectate because real worship is not a spectator sport I come to church to participate to give God my best smile my best hallelujah I come to raise my hand. I come to open my mouth because this may be my last time. Uh, rejoice forevermore. That's the first exhortation in this trilogy of exhortations. The second is in verse number 17. Pray without ceasing. I've been trying to get to this all the morning. The first, the first is rejoice. That should be praise in giving thanks in every situation. But secondly, giving thanks in every situation, that should be prayer. Pray continually praise continually I'm gonna give you an example of that in just a minute prayer 
was not to be limited to prescribed hours, but should rather be a common and constant element in our daily life. Uh, here's what praise and pray without ceasing means. It does not mean to walk around everywhere you go. Oh, glory. That, that, that's not what that means. That's, that's not at all what that means. Here is what it means. You ready? To pray without ceasing is the picture of a person with an intermittent cough. You're not coughing all day, but there's a tickle in the back of your throat that every once in a while is <clears throat> Cough is possible. You're not coughing all day, a cough will just come up at any minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not praying all day. But if you need it, it's right in the back of your throat. You're not praising all day. But when God lets something come your way, a praise just jumps up right away. It's right in the back of your Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. It's always in the back of your throat. And people who know you know not to come around you on your job talking about the Lord. You trying to make me lose my job. Don't call my job telling me how good the Lord is. Don't call me while I'm cooking telling me what the Lord has done for you. You trying to make me burn up my food. God's been just that good to you. And no matter where you are, it just comes up because it's in the back of your throat. Uh, <clears throat> now, likewise, just like praise and prayer, is like an intermittent cough in the back of your throat. There are some things that are cough suppressants. Pride is a cough suppressant. Hatred suppresses your praise cough judgmental spirits is a cough suppressor envy is a cough suppressor lust is a cough suppressor God wants to get a praise out of you but he got to get some other stuff out of you And is there anybody here know that your praise has been perfected because of what you've been through? I need, I, I need about two or three believers here whose, faith, whose praise has been perfected by the storms you've been through. By the, by the mess you got yourself in. And by the mess God got you out of. And then by the mess God kept you from getting in. Somebody ought to help me here. You're not good here. You're not this morning here good and, and, and careful and God is keeping you because you're so righteous. The only reason you haven't stepped in it yet is because of God's mercy. I wish I had a witness here. I need a real worshiper. I need a real praiser here who is not here praising because you got it all together. 
You, you're not praying and praising because everything in your life is coming up roses. You just know that at any minute, a praise can come up. And listen, if it's real, it'll happen in the car. It, it'll happen at Luby's. It, it, it'll happen sitting in the house by yourself. It don't even have to be Sunday morning. You just go look in your closet and see how God has blessed you. That's enough for... <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Get behind the wheel of that car and remember when you didn't have one. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Come on in this church with people to hug you and love you. And remember when you felt by yourself. <clears throat> Thank you. Sit down to your table to eat a meal and look in your pantry and see you got canned goods that you haven't opened. And people in Baton Rouge wish somebody would just give them some. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there anybody here? Got a praise in the back of your throat? Then don't let anybody suppress your hallelujah. And then finally, verse number 18. Verse number 18. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you thankfulness is the opposite of complaining thankfulness is the opposite of complaining I could complain but I won't I used to complain but I won't I need to complain but I won't because when I put my blessings on the side of my complaints the balance of the scale is tilted always in my direction. Somebody ought to help me preach it. My blessings far outweigh my complaints. Oh. <laughs> the Israelites had more to be thankful for than any peoples in the Bible. Yet they were guilty of doing the most complaining. And like no other nation in scripture, they watched God move on their behalf. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about what they heard. I'm not talking about the second generation that was in the promised land. I'm talking about the generation that left Egypt. If anybody should have been praising God, it should have been that crowd because they saw God work miracle. They saw God open the Red Sea. And he loved them so much, he wouldn't let them get their feet muddy. They went over on dry ground. And the enemies that were tracking them, when they got in the midst of the sea, the same sea that opened for Israel, closed on the Egyptians. And the dead bodies of Pharaoh's army washed up on the seashore. Miriam, Moses' sister, got a tambourine. And saying, God is a man of war. 
He's fought many battles. He's never lost one. And Jehovah is his name. They saw that. And then when they got hungry, God rained food, manna, bread from heaven. They saw that. And then they started complaining that it wasn't no meat with the bread. Must have been some of my people in that crowd. And God sent quail, a delicacy in a restaurant right now, to eat with their manna. And then they complained that they didn't have nothing to wash it down with. God told Moses, speak to the rock. Somebody ought to help me preach. And sweet water flowed from a rock. They saw that. Their sandals would not wear out. They wore the same clothes 40 years and they would not wear out. And if anybody should have been praising God, it was the children of Israel. But let's not be too hard on Israel. There's some Israelites in here called African Americans. If anybody ought to be praising God it ought to be people of color have I got a witness here you saw Bull Connor you saw those dogs that they sicked on those children you saw those fire hoses that they let off on those children you saw the back door Jim Crow segregation nigger and gal uncle and boy you saw how they, de how they just dehumanized us as a people. But through all of that, I said through all of that, God brought us through. And you mean to tell me you sitting down in this church, looking around at us, wondering what we are hollering about? Wondering what all this noise is about? I'll tell you what this noise is about. I'm grateful. I said, I'm grateful. I said, I'm grateful. Because he brought me out. Have I got a witness here? He made a way out of nowhere. He did some things for me that I didn't even ask him for. So I'm going to come here every time I get a chance and rejoice over his goodness. I'm going to shout over his blessings. And I need somebody who's not embarrassed to help me testify that God is a good God. God is a merciful God. God is a faithful God. God is worthy to be praised. And if you don't want to praise him, I'm going to praise him by myself. If I'm the only one in my pew, if I'm the only one in my section, I'm going to lift my voice because I'm going to rejoice forevermore because I don't know when trouble is going to come my way. I don't know when sickness is going to come my way. I don't know when hardship is going to come my way. So I've always got something in the back of my throat. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. You've been a mother for me. You've been a father for me. You've been a sister and a brother for me. Is there anybody here? No God been keeping you. If the Lord made a way for you, right now would be a good time to catch up on your praise. If God has opened the door for you, now would be a pretty good time to catch up on your hallelujah. If the Lord been good to you, why don't you grab somebody and say, I got a praise for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you brought me from a mighty long way. You put food on my table. 
<coughs> thank you Lord you put clothes on my back thank you Jesus I got somewhere to sleep tonight thank you Jesus you raise up friends and family for me thank you Jesus why don't you hurt somebody why don't you encourage somebody tell them rejoice forevermore tell them pray without ceasing tell them in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus is there anybody here who knows who I'm talking about he's a rock in a weary land a shelter in a time of storm a friend when you're friendless bread when you're hungry he died didn't he die but bright and early Sunday morning he got up didn't he get up thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I know he's all right Give thanks in every situation. Give thanks in everything. Not for everything. But that word in means in the midst of everything. While you are surrounded by everything give thanks and brothers and sisters here's the shout here's what the, here's the place where you need to shout you can shout your way through your problem God you haven't worked it out yet but I'm gonna live proleptically God you had not made a way yet but I believe you can. God, you haven't opened the door yet. But I'm still knocking. God, you have not done it yet. But that don't mean you're not going to do it. Because you may not come when I want you to. But if my heart is right. If I rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing and in everything just thank you <laughs> thank you <coughs> 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 It's always caught in the back of my throat. It, it, it's always got the possibility of coming up. Thank you. And sometimes I do it at the wrong place. Sometimes I do it at the wrong time. And people think that I'm inappropriate. But you don't know what the Lord has brought me through. You don't know how many storms God has quieted in my life. You don't know how many tears God has dried for me. How dare you not let me get it out. Because sometimes Sunday morning ain't enough time for me to get it out. I need some more time to get it out. I got to, I got to get in the car. I got to get to the house. I got to get where I can get comfortable and tell God thank you for all you've done for me. And not just what he's done for me, but for who he is to me. He is my savior. He is my stronghold. 
He is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Oh, brothers and sisters, I will lift up my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer even my foot to be moved. Behold, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon my right hand. The sun will not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. For the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He, he shall preserve my soul. He shall preserve my going out and my coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I put my trust. <laughs>